Right. So I'll, I'll talk about, um, about some reinforcement learning. Um, so just, just for me to have an idea of how many people know the basic idea of reinforcement learning here. Oh, that's, okay, that's great. Um, so, sorry, I'll go back to. So then the, the title of the, of the paper is Hindsight Experience Replay. Um, I'll briefly talk about what uh, experience replay is um, and, uh, and why this is called Hindsight Reinforcement uh, Experience Replay. It's uh, written by uh, a bunch of people from OpenAI, so it's basically Peter Abel and a bunch of other people. Um, so just before I go into the, um, the specifics of this paper, I just want to uh, kind of show the, the general prerequisite of reinforcement learning. Um, so what we typically talk about in reinforcement learning is Markov decision processes. Um, so I'll, so, so basically what, what that means is that, um, say you start with some sort of initial state, so the environment gives you an initial state, it could be like the opening screen of a computer game or something, um, and then you as the agent uh, takes an action, um, and the environment comes back uh, with a reward and what the next state of the environment is. Um, and then you pick another action, you get a, a reward, and another action. So, so this uh, so the sequence of all the stuff that happens um, is often denoted as uh, tau. And tau is what we call a trajectory. Now, another thing that's important to know is this idea of a return, which is basically from some time step t, let's say from some time step t here, what you're interested in is the sum of all of your future rewards that you get like up to the end of the episode, basically. So, um, so the end of the episode here, as t is very often, uh, so it's, it's called the terminal state. And in the typical situation, you have an episode that actually terminates. So you have a terminal state. Um, so the return is basically, uh, so the sum of all of the future rewards. And uh, there's a little gamma in here just to make sure that you don't really look too far ahead so it's uh, sort of discounted. And then the thing that we want to, that, in, that our reinforcement learning agent wants to maximize, wants the, 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 the goal of this agent, is really to maximize the uh, expectation value or the expected return. So the expected value of this guy. And this is often called the Q function. So the Q function is uh, it's just basically the expected return where you condition on a specific state and a specific action. So, so this, is, this is very, very basic. Um, now another prerequisite that is probably good to talk about uh, at least briefly is what is experience replay. Um, so, what we're interested in is uh, we're interested in these, these sort of uh, these tuples here that are uh, that we call transitions. So a transition takes you from uh, some state action pair, um, combine it with a reward, and where you end up uh, after that, so the next day. But now, what are the things that we, as an agent, have control over, and what are the things that we don't have control over? So the things that we control over, so, so this is sort of the sequence of events per, trans, uh, per transition. So per, for each transition, we have this sequence of events that leads us to have to, to acquire this transition, which is you start with some state. The, at the um, agent then uh, has some sort of policy of figuring out what is the next action that I want to pick from this. So you draw an action from this policy and that gives you a state action pair. And then you, you feed this action to your, or well actually state action pair, to the dynamics of your environment. And the dynamics basically gives you back a reward and the next state. And then finally you get sort of this, this full uh, tuple, which is a transition. Right, can I ask a basic question? Um, what's the difference between 
And so, so the reward is, um, is uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, it's just the, it's, it's uh, the, the, the sort of the prize that you get for picking that action. Is it the reward for the state? Like, it's, like in your game example, the reward might be a new product. Yeah. Could be the state. So part of the state that influences the boss. Yeah, so in a, I'll just give an example. So, that, so for instance, if you play Atari video games, um, the state, so ST and ST plus one, those are basically the pixels on the screen. And your reward is however many, with how many points that your total score has increased or decreased. So, it's, it's, so this is always some sort of floating point number. And this can be any sort of structure, whatever describes the state of the environment. Um, right, so now, so the problem is that, so this is the thing that the agent really wants to control, which is this, uh, which is this policy. So it's this, this thing that we use to draw actions. Um, but this, we don't have access to. So all this stuff in red, we don't have access to. That's the environment. So now, just as a side note, what you do in model-based uh, reinforcement learning is you create a model of this environment. So you try to approximate this, uh, this kind of uh, conditional probability with some model instead. But this is very hard to do. But the thing is, if you can do it, it's really great because it allows you to, to look ahead many time steps uh, before having to actually uh, interact with the environment. So it's really good to sort of you can anticipate really well. Anyway, so that's just a side note. But what you do sort of in practice with the uh, experiment, well, not really in practice yet, but what you do with experience replay is you kind of sample these transitions or the, you sample the reward at the next state from some sort of empirical distribution that you just collected while you were just uh, going through this, uh, this process. Now, in practice, actually, that's not really how it works because you don't get to pick what you feed into here. What you do in practice is that you, you just basically collect all of the transitions that you have and you just throw them in the bag. And then later on, you say, you just grab them from that bag and say, okay, here I've got a transition. I'm going to learn from that. So basically, what you're going, you, you do sort of a frequentist version of this kind of model. That's the way I uh, think about it. Experience replay. Right, so what is hindsight experience replay? Um, so, in, in very broad stroke, oh, sorry. Uh, it, no, it's more just a bag of tuples. It's easier to think about it. It's, uh, it's just so you've got a bag of, of things that you've, that you've encountered and you just like, draw from it. That's right. That's really so another way of saying that is that this conditional probability only is conditioned on previous states and not in many previous states. Yeah. Sorry, just one. Come, come. Come. That's right. Yeah, that's basically what you're doing. Yeah, so you just you just uh, you just collect what you've seen, yeah, yeah. and you you store it. Yeah. So so it's. Yeah, so I kind of, I kind of chose not to talk about it, but I can <laughs> just say a few words. So, so why do you want to sample these things? Um, the reason is that the way you learn uh, 
for instance, if you do uh, something like uh, value-based reinforcement learning, is you draw these transitions and you use uh, the combination of the rewards, the immediate rewards, and the next state. Use that combination to construct a target that you then regress to. Um, and this, this is called, uh, uh, yeah, I forgot it. Um, but, but the detail, I feel like I, I'll, I'll kind of. Perfectly. I could throw some of the three gems, but for example, it's okay. Say uh, a player has arrived at the bulk of the reward. I feel like we're we're getting a little bit off track here, so I'll, I'll just uh, I'll pull the train back on trail on, tra on track. So the main idea of uh, hindsight uh, experience replay is um, so so suppose we have this. Uh, I feel I feel like the most intuitive way of, of seeing this is kind of uh, pictorially. Um, so the, the the environment here, the, the the game that we're playing is we have a puck, and uh, and we want to um, we want to basically get from this position to that position. So the goal is to give it a little bit of a hit, and then it needs to sort of slide on sort of a bumpy ice, let's think about it that way, and then it should end up here. Uh, and maybe we can give it like a couple of pushes along the way. Um, so it's kind of like curling, let's think about it as curling. So you, you're kind of, you're trying to get this, uh, this, this curling puck or whatever they call them, cane? What? Kettle. A kettle, okay. Try to get the kettle from here to here. That's really the goal. And, uh, uh, but, but, so the, the way you can set up this problem is just say, uh, just a binary uh, signal. So if you hit the target, you get a yes, good. If you don't, you get nothing. So it's super hard because the only way to learn is if you just by chance actually hit this, which is pretty much impossible. It's sort of astronomically hard to do. So what you end up doing, so, so you'll just try out anything, and what hindsight reinforcement, um, wait, sorry, sorry. Before I go to the next slide, so, so basically just what, what, what this trajectory is, is just an unsex, unsuccessful uh, trajectory where basically all of the rewards are zero. And it's unsuccessful because the terminal state is not actually equal to the goal state. Um, so, so this trajectory goes into our experience replay bucket. Now, what if, what if we take our goal state and just cheat, right? <laughs> we can just take it and just put it over there. And, uh, and, th and this is exactly what, what the, the whole idea is. So you just take whatever the goal state was and you just say, okay, but what would, have, what would reality have looked like if I happen to just hit this by chance. And, uh, and then so this gives you another sort of would-be successful trajectory um, where the sort of state action, uh, all of those things are the same, but the rewards are different because now we actually got a different signal. Because the signal here is that we actually did hit this goal. We put like a little prime on, on all the things because the signal is, of course, a different kind of signal. It's like a would-be signal. Um, but, but what you do with this is that you kind of take a, a signal that is so sparse that you can't really work with it, and you just sort of, com sort of make it much, much denser. So suddenly you have much more signal to train on. Yeah. Uh, yes, that as well, yeah. Because basically, so the number of different goals that you consider also depends on where your agent happens to end up at. Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, Strictly speaking, all of these, like in the setup that I was just saying, like these don't change. Right. Yeah. So it's it's only the last the last uh, that is actually. Yeah, you could. 
the yeah. intermediary world version is doing value. Yeah, the intimate, uh, the intimate, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so another, another way of saying it is that if, if I were to write, instead of the R's here, I would write the G's, that would look like just the full returns from that time step onward, then it would, it would actually change. Actually, you're right. I, think, I don't think... But you can imagine changing this too, I guess. Anyway. But yeah, in this, in this setup, you don't. Um, right, so the, the, this is... Uh, okay. <laughs> This, look, this may look a little bit overwhelming, but it's just a copy of the same thing. I just put like, so this is my way of representing a trajectory. So just think of this as one line of things. Don't think of all the symbols in there, okay? Um, what I do want you to think about is like, so I won't go into the details actually. I just realized this when I was looking at this earlier, but, uh, but basically there is a choice to be made. So I won't do it in, on this slide, but what if I do it on this slide? So one of the things that we said is if we can take this goal set and just put it on the other goal, on the other terminal set. But what we can also do is we can also just say, well, why not, why not put it here? Or here, or here, or here. So you can put it in different places along that trajectory. And that's basically the different strategies are different places where you put it. Well, no, because because you still record also all the failures, right? And you can, yeah, for for all the all of the experience that you have. So you, there is there is an abundance of of failures, okay. and and you get to choose how many sort of positives you want to trickle into. But it's up to you. Like you can you can add as as many or as few as you want. Right. So you yeah. So there are different. Uh, it's a bit more like an exactly. Well, it's so sparse that it's like sort of, you know, the, on astronomical uh, level of sparse that, that it's just unrealistic to expect it. No, no, yeah, it is useful. Okay, so let me just go go ahead. So, so the nice video that I found, uh, I don't know how I play it because it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. I well, I see, I see it there, but I don't see it here. Uh, let me see. <laughs> like no scoping. Press, press space, maybe? Oh. oh. No. no. Fuck. <laughs> uh, pause. So the, the intuitive explanation of why it works, though, is because you're moving to all these different goals, and you want to get, you, see, you end up somewhere and say, if you, wanted to get, if you wanted to get there, that's what you should have done. Yeah. What you're hoping is your neural net learns to end up at places, and then finally you can just say, and here's my original goal, which was to end up in the bottom right hand corner. Yeah. And now it knows how to do that because it's seen how it would have got to other things. So yeah, exactly. Goal step, goal space. Yeah. Sometimes like the goal space has some level of granularity depending on the experience or yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And you're kind of you're, you're turning the problem upside down. Are, are we moving on? Or, yeah. <laughs> well, I think okay. So uh, just just Google uh, hindsight experience replay, and you'll get uh, you'll get this video. It's really nice. Um, and I guess the gist of it is uh, is that it's otherwise impossible. So um, uh, right, Lizzie.